Hey, Doc Lover. Good evening, sis. Thanks for joining. Hey, Doc Lover. Good evening, sister of mine. Happy weekend. Hope you are doing fine, sis. Hope you are doing fine. Happy weekend. We have come again. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have come again, sis. Good evening. Thanks for joining. Yes. Hi, brother Valerie on Facebook. I see you at the Travis. Hello for Big Comba. <laughs> hey, brother Valerie. Good evening. Thanks for joining, bro. You are welcome. Long time. Hope you are doing well. How are you keeping? See, since I'm doing fine by, by his grace, I can't complain for sure. I can't complain. I'm fine. So long as I'm in good health, then we give God the glory. Hope you are faring well also. Yes, thanks for joining. Thank God it's Friday so we can rest. Yes, we are here to learn. Amen. We are here to learn. Confirm for sure. And today we have a, a very interesting topic. Another fine day to learn. Of course, Brother Valerie, another fine day to learn. And indeed, we are going to learn. Hello, sis. Good evening. Good evening, sisters. Sisters, thanks for joining on Facebook. You're welcome, sisters. How are you doing, sis? Long time. Sis, share to your contact. Old with tango. See, so dog lover, the problem I say no for sure. It be very difficult because the phone we are the user for record now. Again, now just one phone or two phones who are the user for record. So all the two phones there, it they on now. So if I like stop and for go record, it go it go worry. Now the problem that we see me, I need to ever share either on Facebook, either on my YouTube set because now the same page should the same phone we are the user. So, and I know I really used to me all this system for start for manipulate. I know I manipulate something for disturb the certain things. Now, it's seen that I know if I really find some my share for my contact, but at the same phone way, I <laughs> the life no balance. But anyway, not what I'll do now. And I I will stop and it, okay, I understand. But you know what I'll do? I'll try to stop the one for Facebook a little bit. And then I try for share them and then I connect back for Facebook. I think it will, it will be better like that. Now, I dare share. Thanks, Doc Lover. Let me try to do it. I'll stop the one on Facebook. But uh, Valerie and Sister Rose, please let me cut people off a little bit and then I share the video. But I'll connect you back in less than five minutes. You'll be back, please. So don't go away. Sisters, moon and no go out. Beg my try for share the video. I'll connect to my back. Let me just off the one on Facebook. I'll connect on the back. So moon, I no go a beg. <laughs> I did beg on and I beg a more. Yes, thank you very much, brother Valerie, for the for the understanding. Let me just off it. Yeah, Doc Lover, thanks very much for that idea. I know I ever like think and so because I use not the same phone then. So ma, I just try for. Of the one now, not of the one now for Facebook. Let me try to share on my contacts. That's a very brilliant idea before I connect now live on Facebook. Thanks very much, sis. Together we grow, we grow, together we grow. I know, but where is the struggle for be your audience? So it get us, baby, no shaking. I'm happy just for the fact that you alone, you are here for me, it's okay. It's okay. I believe you will learn something. If I can impact a life per day, that's much achievement on my part. Eh? Even though I am yet to grow, but yeah, we we'll grow. We we'll start by uh, laying one step after the other. Let me try to share it, Doc Lover. So how are you, sis? Hope you are doing fine. Okay, let me go then. YouTube and uh, and I ever even like even think and so so nothing they were feeling doing it's very it's good so so you don't tell me yes and then I will go for the life how to prevent diabetes food Mm. 
Let me share it on my WhatsApp status. Thanks very much for this idea, Doc Lover. No one ever try for even think and serve if you do one soon. okay it has been shared okay sis i will share to a few people but i do not want them to know my fake profile so when we have few people i will share it's okay sis don't worry keep yourself safe that one be very important keep yourself safe if you are not secure don't do anything to jeopardize yourself it's okay it's okay just take your time and do what you know that it will be best for you i understand thanks very much thanks for the concern Thanks for every support. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Famtosa531. Hello, sis. Caught you online. Yes, today you caught me big time. Thanks, Ia, for me. Good evening, Ia Mado. Good evening. Thanks for joining. Today you really caught me online. Wow, thanks for joining. Yes, thanks for joining. I'm trying to share the video so that other people can join if they are available. Hey, Ia Mado, Ia Lawyer, you're welcome. Thanks very much, Big Sis, for joining. Hope you are doing well. Oh, I appreciate your presence. Yes, yeah, seriously, I'm so overwhelmed having you on my platform. Yes, yeah, Celebrity Lawyer is in the building. Thanks, Mama Mado, seriously. I'm so happy having you here today. Okay, yes, yeah, Sis, I don't try for share anymore. I don't share some few ones, so I'll just leave us soon. I connect it back to Facebook. Washing says, yes, Iamado, please so wash. Let's wash and create diabetes awareness in our community. Our goal here is to create diabetes awareness. Please help me to share the video even on your status so that other people can join us. You know it's with diabetes me for our Cameroonian community. So I'm out to create diabetes awareness so that we feel manage our diabetes adequately because most people they really get problems or difficulties or they don't even know what to do when they get diabetes. So as a registered nurse and a certified uh, diabetes educator here, I decided to say why I know if we create a platform for create diabetes awareness for our Cameroonian community. So now think this way at the just do one. Okay, I will always share. Thank you very much, Iamado. Yes, so the goal is actually to create diabetes awareness in our community. That is what we are striving to do. That is what I'm trying to do. And you all, you sharing the video is you helping me to create this diabetes awareness. So thank you all very much for joining. I really appreciate your presence here. I'm so grateful having you all here, to be honest. Yes, I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. So today I get a very interesting topic when it comes to diabetes management and for those that with the struggle with diabetes and that is what we will be discussing here today how to take care of your feet when you have diabetes. It is very important for anyone where you get diabetes may it know how if you control the food so that it will prevent diabetes food complications. Because uh, most people then, at the end of the day, they'll 
end up with amputations. All these amputations is just because they didn't take care of their feet or something happened along the line. But today we are going to be talking on how to take care of diabetes feet because it is very important for those who have diabetes, for those who are having high blood sugar levels because the complications of diabetic neuropathy are very serious, which can in most cases lead to amputation. So the topic of today is actually to prevent amputations. Yes, we don't want amputations again in our Cameroonian community because of diabetes. No, let there be am amputations, but let these amputations come maybe from Accident, untimely accident or whatever, but let it not be from diabetes. So we will be giving that awareness today for people to control their feet in order to prevent all these amputations. Yes, so you are welcome. Please help me to share the video as you join so that other people can watch us, other people can learn from this topic of today and then they can be able to manage their blood sugar levels because high blood sugar levels is always the cause of diabetes complications. That is where it begins. So if they can manage their blood sugar levels, then these complications will be avoided. So I'm so happy and I'm so excited to treat this particular topic because yeah, it's something that is really important and people often neglect it when it comes to diabetes management. This particular area of diabetes is mostly exempted. So today we are going to touch it. I'm going to be showing, even though I will not do like a real demonstration, but I will be explaining how to do the foot control so that you know what to control when you are controlling a diabetic patient. You know the exact points and the exact places, all the things that you have to control. So that is what we will be doing. Yes, very important. Indeed, dog lover, very important. That is what we will be doing here today. It is also good for, even for medical practitioners, if you are a nurse, if you are working in care, it's important for you to know this also so that when you go out there and then you can share the ideas or you can share the knowledge that you have with your colleagues. I remember in my days when I was just a nurse, I didn't have all this information about food control. Hello, I cannot even read her name. Yes, I didn't have all these ideas about diabetes food, uh, food control. It is until I got my certificate as a diabetes educator before I knew, ah, so this is how we were supposed to be controlling all this diabetes food. People don't know. So for anyone who is working in the care, if you are a nurse, if you are an assistant nurse, this topic is for you because it's going to help you in your career so that you can prevent any food problems from your patients. You can prevent food problems from your clients because most of these clients, they themselves cannot identify this problem. But you as a professional, it is good that you have this knowledge so that when you see those signs, you will be able to identify them that, ah, this is a diabetic problem and it has to be taken under control. So that is what we are going to be doing today. I will just jump start into the show because I see that we are 15 minutes after 9 p.m. So you are all welcome to Diabetes Mindful Talk with Mira Bekuno. If you are watching me on YouTube, I am Diabetes Mindful Talk with, with Mira Bekuno. If you are watching me on Facebook, I am Mira Bekuno, Diabetes Educator. Edu uh, foundation but it's all the same it's just that i am on two separate platforms stay watching i will make my input thanks very much iamado thank you very much keep watching yes keep watching of, of course if you have any problems please uh, cause any diabetes don't hesitate ask the question if i cannot give you an answer directly i will do my research and then i will come back with the answer uh, Rose, my sister, said, true talk, sister. She's not true, no. You know, we when we were working in the in, in the rice home, we would just go diabetes. We are just doing, we are just doing. We don't know what to control. We'll just wash them, chop, chop, chop. We'll remove them. No, but there are certain things that we as healthcare providers, we have to take care of them because those people, those clients, those patients, they are not aware of those things. But you have been trained. So it's you who have to provide them with this 
information and this is the information that i am going to do here hey my million queen my zeus for me good evening our diabetic educator extraordinary my zeus thanks for joining sis you are welcome thanks for joining yes my amins they are not doing bad always representing Yes, so you are all welcome to Diabetes Mindful Talk. Today we will be talking about a very important issue when it, con when it concerns diabetes management. Thank you very much, Brother Valerie. Thanks for the compliments. Yes, so we'll be discussing a very important issue when it, con when it concerns diabetes management. And this is diabetic food control. How we can control diabetic food that is what we will be discussing today. And we know all, it is very important for people who have diabetes that we control their feet to make sure that we can discover any infection, any, any misforming of their feet, we can discover them on time so that they can be treated on time. Hey, Mimi Kumba, greetings, Mommy Mirabikono. Thanks very much, Mimi Kumba. Thanks for joining, sis. You're welcome. You are all welcome. We are just kickstarting the show. So you are all welcome. Please, as you join, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and share the video so that other people can join us. Let us keep creating diabetes awareness in our community. Remember, one can chase a thousand by two can chase 10,000. So let's keep spreading the good news about diabetes so that other people can have this knowledge and will keep growing. We are all building this community to make a Cameroonian community free of diabetes complication. And together we can all do it. So you are welcome. Like I was saying, today we are going to be discussing about how to control a diabetes diabetic food because it is very important for diabetic food to be to be taken seriously why because when you have high blood sugar levels these high blood sugar levels can damage your nerves they can damage your nerves they can damage your blood vessels which will make it very difficult for blood flow to to effectively uh, flow so we have to control our feeds to make sure that we prevent this problem and to discover this problem before it gets worsened. So we will be discussing that today. And I will be showing you some signs that you can use to identify a diabetic food problem. Hello, Ivo Bikono. Greetings, B Mira Bikono. Thanks, bro, for joining. You're welcome, bro. How are you doing? Yes. So that is it. We will be talking about that because if your nerves are damaged, we call that, yes, neuropathy. Thank you very much, Doc Lover. We call that diabetic neuropathy. Why? Because your nerves are damaged. And if these nerves are damaged, then it will make you not to have that sensation in your feet, which means that you can easily have a wound without even noticing that you have a wound. You can even have a wound that is being infected without you noticing it. Why? Because your nerves have been damaged. And when your nerves have been damaged, you will not feel any pain. You will not know that anything is happening to you unless you control your feet before you can discover the problem. That is why today I am going to be discussing how you can effectively control a diabetic feet so that you can you can notice all these problems and bring them under control. As a nurse, as an assistant nurse, your job is just to control these fees and then you make your evaluations and then you send them to their doctors. You as a registered nurse or you as a nurse assistant, you don't have anything to do. Your only job is to do your observations. When you observe and you notice anything, you take your report down and then you send it to the doctor that is in charge of this patient and then they can further do their control that is very important 
you look take away thank you very much krista zone thank you very much for joining sis you're welcome you're welcome yeah so that is what we are going to be discussing and like i said the root to this diabetic neuropathy is as a result of high blood sugar level so it is very important for every diabetes patient or not even every diabetes patient for every normal human being to take control of their blood high High blood sugar level because high blood sugar level doesn't only happens to people that have diabetes no a normal person that has not been diagnosed with diabetes can also uh, face the problem of high blood sugar levels for example if you are stressed up if you didn't sleep well it can cause you to have high blood sugar level and when you continuously have these high blood sugar levels they can damage your nerves which is not good that is our main focus today nerves damage known as diabetic neuropathy so what are the signs that if you see you can identify that this is a diabetic food problem the first sign for you to know that someone has a diabetic food problem is when that person is complaining about cramps on their feet if you see someone who is constantly complaining about cramps cramps can be a sign of diabetic neuropathy or a sign of food problem for anyone who is suffering with diabetes another sign is pain if they are constantly complaining about pain but then when you check their feet you will not find anything maybe a wound or scratches any injuries you cannot find it but that person is constantly complaining about pain at the lower limbs yes it can be a sign of food problem which can be associated to diabetes so that is our second sign the third sign i am going to tell you is tingling if you see someone often complaining about tingling i have tingling in my feet by the time he or she makes two or three moves they stop and then they complain of tingling that can also be a sign of diabetic neuropathy or a sign of food problem so when you constantly have people complaining about these signs make sure to take pay attention to them because these signs are not good wow cramps cramps good to know yes dog lover cramps is one of the signs of a foot problem it is not normal for you to be having cramps so by the time you start having continuous cramps know that it is a sign of something it is showing something so we have to be taking a note of that yes i know of tingling yes tingling is also a sign we have pain i have talked about pain i have talked about i'm talking about numbness numbness is another sign if you notice people that keeps having numbness maybe you touch them but then they are not feeling that you are touching them that is a sign of foot problem and it is not okay so when you discover those signs, make sure to talk with the doctor or ask the patients how they are feeling. Because numbness is not a good sign, tingling is not a good sign, cramps is not a good sign, pain is not a good sign. Those are four signs already of foot problems that you can uh, trace with people who are having diabetes. So make sure to put all these signs down because they are very important. So those are four. And then the fifth sign is, if you see somebody that the feet, before you used to notice maybe their feet were straight, maybe after one or three months, you start realizing that their feet, they are like bent to the side or they are no more straight like they used to be. That can also be a sign of a foot problem. If their feet are misformed, is also a sign of foot problem because before their feet were okay but what happened suddenly that their feet changed in form that can be a sign of a foot problem or diabetes foot problem so let us take these signs into consideration so i have talked of pain i have talked of foot misforming i've talked of cramps i've talked of numbness tingling those are easy signs to be noticed. So if you notice those signs, 
make sure to write a report and then complain it with the doctor so that they know that this patient is suffering from those signs, especially people that have diabetes. It can be as a result of damaged nerves. So those are the signs that you can be able to trace for anyone who is having diabetes to see if it can be diabetic neuropathy that they are suffering from. I don't know, up to this point, do we have any questions about the signs of food problems? Uncle Valerie, are you there? Okay, if there are no questions, then we will go to the next point. The next point is that how to limit uh, the risk of food problem. How can we limit it? What can we do in order for us to limit food problem? The, can the signs begin with any of the, Yes, they can begin with any of the legs. Crystal zone is not a particular leg, no. They begin with any leg. So you, you must not be waiting that it will start with my right leg. No, it can start from anywhere, depending on where the nerves is damaged. If your nerve, nerves are damaged on your left leg, then you will start experiencing those signs on your left leg. But if your nerves are damaged on your right leg, and then that is where you will be experiencing this, those signs. It is also possible that you, only your one leg can be affected. You can have the, uh, nerves damage only on one leg. It's not a must that all the legs are being damaged by, that all your legs are being damaged. No, only your one leg is, is okay for you to be suffering from diabetic neuropathy. So don't wait until the two legs start getting serious before you say, oh, now is the time for me to go and consult. No, immediately you start feeling it on one leg. Make sure to take action. Because it is serious. It is not something to keep it. Dog lovers say signs of neuropathy. One, cramps, tingling, numbness, pain, and change of shape of it. Thank you very much for the brief summary, dog lover. Okay, thanks for the clear explanation. Yes, crystal zone. So don't wait and expect to have it on both legs. No, it can happen on one leg, depending on where the nerves are damaged, you can experience all these signs. What about swollen? So swollen can also be a sign. And most often, this swollen is like swollen with water. We call it, in Netherlands, it's odema. In English, odema. Udema in English, I guess. Yes, this thing, like in Cameroon, you will see where we used to press person in food, and then it go inside, we say the person get gout. That is a sign also for diabetic neuropathy feet. If you see that sign also with swollen feet, that is a sign you have to know that there is something that is not right there. So we have to take that also under uh, uh, our care because it's not right. Yes, Dr. Lover, swollen feet, especially swollen feet, that shows that there is water in those legs. So make sure, to, yeah, Udema, that is it. Yeah, in German, na Udem. Okay, confirm. In English, is Udema. In Netherlands, is Udem. And then in German, is Udem. Okay, so we are all on the same page. They are almost the same uh, pronunciation. So, yes, that is it. Yes, Udema mostly when pregnant. Voila, sir. That happens also with pregnant women. Yes, but that is also, it can be a sign that can be attributed to diabetic neuropathy. But now we are into our second subtopic. And what is it? How can we identify or limit the risks of diabetes food problem? So what are the things that we can do to stop these food problems? The first thing for you to do is for you to inspect your feet daily. Yes, if you are a diabetic, the very first thing for you to do is for you to inspect your feet daily. Make sure every day when you wake up, inspect your feet. Yes, Udim and Muslim Archives read that already. Make sure say you make sure say you inspect your food. There it be very important to inspect your feet. Very important. If you cannot inspect your feet by yourself, use a mirror. Use a mirror. You sit. You lift your foot up high, and then you use the mirror to control your feet, especially under your feet. Especially under your feet. If you still realize that 
with the mirror, you are unable to get a good result. And then call someone to help you to inspect your feet because it's very important as a diabetic to daily check your feet. You are checking your feet so that if in case there is anything that is happening with your feet, you will trace it at a very early stage and then you can take action so that it might not uh, go into serious complications. So make sure to check them. Like I said, if you cannot check your feet by yourself because you have to check under your feet, if you cannot do that by yourself, use a mirror. And if with the mirror you are not still satisfied with the results that you are having, then call someone, even if it is your neighbor. So long as you are good with your neighbor, call your neighbor to help you to check your feet, especially if you are a diabetic. Let me read this question from Brother Valerie on Facebook. He says, how do we check it? Uncle Valerie, I'm coming to that. Now I'm just giving, don't worry. I just said, if you cannot check, you can check it. You use a mirror, you lift your feet on high, and then you look if you have things. But I will tell you later on in this show what you are going to be checking and how you are going to check it. Yes, yeah, so I will explain that that one is still coming. But I'm just giving you how you can limit this foot problem. The first thing for you to limit foot problem is for you to check your feet. But in the course of this video, I will explain what you have to be looking for. Yeah, so the first one was for you to constantly check your feet. Make sure to inspect your feet daily. The second thing for you to do is to wash your feet. Wash your feet daily. If you can wash your feet daily, that will be very good. Wash your feet daily with lukewarm water, not with hot water, no. I will explain further why not with hot water. If already you are suffering from diabetic neuropathy and then you use hot water to wash your feet, you can incur some uh, injuries. And with these injuries, you might not even feel them because your nerves are damaged. So make sure to wash your feet daily with lukewarm water, not Hot water, no. Hot water is very dangerous, dangerous, sorry, especially for someone who is already suffering with diabetes because you don't know if that person already is suffering from diabetic neuropathy or damaged nerves, which means that even if this person is incurring a burns, they will not feel them. So avoid washing your feet with hot water use lukewarm water after washing your feet make sure to dry your feet well not just drying like we'll just dry and pass concentrate mostly in between the toes make sure to dry good in between the toes so that in between the toes they can be thoroughly dried off because bacteria that easily settle in between the toes, especially if they are wet. So if you wash your feet and you don't dry them well, it can cause a maceration. And when you have maceration, then bacteria can settle there and it will cause infection. So avoid that. Wash your feet well daily with lukewarm water. Make sure you dry your feet well especially in between your toes. Dry in between your toes to prevent maceration. Yes, after finish drying your feet, make sure to use moisturizing cream to hydrate your feet. It is very important if you are a diabetic to moisturize your feet. Hydrate your feet. Keep your feet hydrated. Why? Because if you are suffering from dry feet, this dryness can lead to cracks. And from cracks, you might incur some wounds. And we all know diabetes wounds, they are the most difficult and the most dangerous wounds to be treated. So prevent this by washing your feet well, drying them well, especially between your toes, Use a clean towel to dry them so that you will not bring bacteria again into your toes. And then make sure to moisturize them with a good moisturizing cream 
to keep your feet hydrated. This is very important for diabetic, but for any other person, you can also use it. So that is way number two for you to take care of your feet in order for you to prevent any risks of getting foot problem. The first thing is for you to inspect your feet daily. The second thing is for you to wash your feet daily and make sure to dry them well, especially, I am emphasizing, especially between the toes because we often skip it and it is not good. So let's make sure to dry in between the toes. And then the third thing is for you to take care of your toenails. Your toenails are very important for you to cut them. Don't allow your toenails to long and pass the edge of your toes. No, make sure to cut them. If you are cutting your nails, cut your nails straight, especially if you are suffering with diabetes. Cut your nails straight. Don't follow the shape of your nails. No, cut them straight. Because if you follow the, the shape of your toes, you can easily incur wounds at the edges because you have to bend all the corners like that. You can easily incur wounds. And like I said, diabetes wounds, they are very difficult to be healed. So by preventing that is for you to cut your nails straight. And what is good for you to use to cut your nails is to use nail scissors. Nail files are good, but they are not that good like nail scissors. For our patients, we advise them to use nail scissors to cut their nails because with the nail scissors, you can easily cut your nails straight. So that is the third point I am giving on how you can prevent the risks woman <laughs> she said thank you ma you are welcome my pleasure yes so make sure to cut your nails straight don't cut your nails following the shape of your foot no if you do that you can easily incur injury and that is why you will see most pedicure by the time they come to the patient and they leave the patient they will always have wounds why because they will follow the shape of their toes and this is actually not good especially when you have diabetes for diabetes patients their toes have to be cut straight and it's good for you to even consult with a medical pedicure. Allow them to come and cut your nails if you cannot cut your nails by yourself. If you cannot do it by yourself, allow a medical pedicure to do it for you. They are trained and they will best know how to do it. So that is the third way in which you can limit or prevent foot problem. Any problem up to now? We have just mentioned three. And the fourth thing is for you to wear good shoes. Make sure to wear good shoes. Wear shoes. Don't wear shoes that have heels if you are a diabetic patient. No, it is not good for you. Wear good low shoes. And before you wear your shoes, make sure to inspect your shoes. Check if there are any objects inside your shoe. Signature 5848. That's fact saying terms of... Thank you very much, Signature 5848. I believe you are best understanding me because you said you have a friend who is suffering with diabetes, so you best understand what I'm saying. Thanks very much, bro. You are welcome. Yes, that's fact saying. Thumbs up. Thank you very much. Yes, so the next thing for you to do is for you to wear good shoes. Don't wear shoes that are, don't wear high heels, no. If you are a diabetic patient, high heels are not meant for you. Make sure to wear low-fitted shoes. Don't wear shoes that are tight-fitted, no. Look for shoes that size you wear, shoes that even have allowance. And that is why it is very important as a tip, I am going to give you all that are watching me now is a bonus point. If you are going to buy your shoes, especially if you are a diabetic, don't go in the morning to buy your shoes. No. If you go in the morning to buy your shoes, by the time you wear that shoe one or two times, those shoes will be small for you. The best moment for you to buy your shoes is late in the afternoon or around the evening. Why? Because during those moments, your feet 
would have been a little bit swollen. And then it is very good for you to go buy your shoes when your feet are swollen. So don't just wake up from your bed very early in the morning and you are going to purchase shoes. No, that is not good for you. Buy your shoes late in the afternoon or in the evening when your feet are a little bit swollen up. Great education, superwoman. We are so proud of you. Thank you very much, Evo Bikono, my sugar. Thanks very much. Thanks, bro. Thanks, thanks, thanks for joining. Yes. Yeah, so that is just it. I've just mentioned the first thing for you to do is for you to inspect your feet daily. The second thing for you is to wash your feet daily. Make sure to dry them well and then uh, dry between your toes, moisturize your feet. The fourth thing I said was for you to take care of your toenails, which means that you should not allow your toenails to be longer than your toes. Make sure to cut them. And when you want to cut them, cut them straight. Don't follow the shape of your toes. No, if you follow the shape of your toes, you might inquire injuries, which is not good. Another thing for you to do, I said, was for you to wear good shoes. And before you wear your shoes, make sure to inspect these shoes before you put your feet inside. Why? Because they can be sharp objects inside your shoes. And if you don't, if you don't check them, you cannot know. And then you put your feet inside your shoe, you inquire some injuries, which is not good for anyone who is managing diabetes. So make sure to always check your shoes before you wear them. And like I said, if you go to buy your shoes, don't wake up very early in the morning and rush to buy your shoes. No, it is a no, no. Why? Because when you buy these shoes, it will a couple of days, they will not size you again. So wait around late afternoon or evening when your feet are swollen. That is the best moment for you to go and buy your shoes. Hey, Pastor Christa, thanks for joining. You're welcome, Pastor. Thanks for joining. A woman shoes shoe season. Oh, wow. How come I am hearing about the trick to buy shoes just now? Thank you. Yes. This is something that most people don't know. So, woman, it's just good that you are here to gain from this knowledge. So, it's a privilege. Most people don't know about it. Unless you are dealing with people that have diabetes, then you can know about this. But now you have heard about it. So, when you are going, try it. Just try it. You will see it. When you're going to buy your shoes, don't just wake up from your bed and you rush to the shop to go and buy shoes. Because in the morning, your feet are still intact. They are very small. When you buy shoes, it will happen two to three times. These shoes will not size you again. But wait until your feet are a little bit swollen, which is late in the afternoon or late in the evening. And then you go and buy your shoes. If you do it like that, you will always have a perfect size of shoe. And these shoes, even if you come back home, and then in the morning, you want to wear these shoes. The shoes will be a little bit bigger, but then they will size you very well. Then for you to go and buy your shoes very early in the morning, remember your feet are not yet swollen. And then when you want to wear these shoes in the afternoon, because in the afternoon, your feet will have been swollen. The shoes will not size you again. So that is just how it is. So it's better to go buy your shoes when your feet are swollen than when your shoe, your feet are not swollen. Because if they are swollen, no matter any time of the day, you can always fit in these shoes. But if you go very early in the morning and then you want to wear your shoes, maybe in the evening, your foot, your shoes will not size you because your feet are swollen. Is this tips for shoes only or for no it's not only for diabetic even for normal person for you and me who are good to go without diabetes you can also apply the tip when you are going to buy your shoes don't go very early in the morning to buy your shoes no if you can notice you will see that when you wake up no for everyone yes thank you very much krista but it's for everyone if you notice when you wake up very early in the morning your feet because you slept your feet have rested so your feet they will contract they will take their normal shape but around the afternoon if you can observe where you will see that your feet are a little bit swollen 
That is normal. So it is best at this moment to go and purchase these shoes. More especially for people who have diabetes, but every other human being, if you want to buy a shoe, you can use this tip to purchase your shoes. But if you have diabetes, it is very important. Why? Because we don't want a diabetic patient to wear tight-fitted shoes because it can cause them injury, which is not good for, for them. Remember, we are trying to prevent foot problems. So you buying tight-fitted shoes, you wear them, and then it incur, you incur more injuries. It's not healthy for them. Yes, yeah, so that is the bonus tip. And then the other point that I am going to be saying is for you not to use hot water bottles on your feet. This can go alongside with what I said. Don't wash your feet with hot water. Using hot water bottles or electric blankets or electric towels on your feet is not good, especially for people who have diabetes. Why? Because these people might be suffering from diabetic neuropathy, which means that their nerves have been damaged. But then if they are using these electric things or these hot things on their feet and they are being burned, they will not feel them. Why? Because their nerves are damaged. So avoid using hot materials on your feet if you are a diabetic. If you are a diabetic, avoid using hot water bottles, electric blankets, or electric towels. Avoid them because they can cause injuries to you. So that is it. Another thing for you to do is for you, when you have cracks, when you have cracks on your feet, in English, they call it callosis. If you have callosis, don't remove them by yourself. I'm begging. Don't do that. I have come across many patients. They will struggle to remove them by themselves. No, if you have cracks, please look for a medical pedicure or look for a podolog. That is a food specialist. Let them help you to remove all these cracks. Why? Because if you are struggling to remove these cracks or to cut these cracks by yourself, you can cut your feet open. Since I think we, I, since I think we should be careful with pedicure because these blades are so sharp and can cause bruises on the sole of the feet. Thank you very much, uh, um, Doc Lover. That is why I'm saying that some of that, I, I remember I said a point that you should not cut, you should cut your foot, your toenails tray. Why, when you see the, the pedicures, they come to the patients, after when the patient, when the pedicure, they learn, these patients, they will always incur injuries. Why? Because this pedicure, when they come cutting the nails, they are following the shape of the toenails. But that is not how they are supposed to cut the toenail. They have to cut them straight. That is why they will always leave their patients or their clients with wounds at the corners of their toes. So you have to cut them straight. For sure, what you are saying is a fact. We have to really avoid pedicure, but because their scissors or their, their, their scissors or their blades that they are using, they are really sharp. But if you have this knowledge and then you are inviting a pedicure to come to you, you can be specified to the pedicure to tell them how to cut your toenails. Yes, this you specify how for them to cut your toenails because you have the knowledge for sure. And most of them, they will just cut it following the toenails. At the end of the day, they leave their patients with wounds. Before you want to know, these wounds are infected. So for sure, uh, for sure, dog lover, for people, especially for people with diabetes, it is advisable for you to use a podologue. A podologue is someone who is specialized in food problems. They know when they can, when something is going serious on your feet, they can easily identify it. If you are living in Belgium, I will speak now of, of Belgium because I know about the law of diabetes, how it works in Belgium about podologue and pedicures. For us, as a diabetic when you are because we have things they call the like projects if you are in the zone 
project or the care project is their project it is you have the start project you have the zero triad that you have the the conveyance when you are in the zero triad or in this zero care project you have the right of a podolo you have a right of a podolo and you have it two times per year so you go two times per year to this specialist this food specialist for they to control your feet when you go there they will check your feet they will help if you have long nails they will help to cut your nails if you have problems with your toenails they will help you to treat them if you have cracks on your feet they will help to shape them for you so if you are a diabetic in belgium know that you have a right and if you are under the zero triad as it is as, as it is being called know that you have uh, the right to go to a podolo two times per year but you have to look for this podolo yourself and this two times per year is one session is 45 minutes you have it gratis for them okay gratis because you have been insured but then you just have to look for the address you book your appointment you go to them and then they will inspect your fits for you if there is any problem they will easily trace you and tell you what to do that is just it hey f gold i see you sister thanks for joining thanks for joining yeah so Hello, host. Hey, F. Go. Thanks for joining. Since you're welcome. Yes. Yeah, so, Doc Lover, that was also just supporting the point of saying that we have to be careful with pedicure. Of course, we really have to be careful with pedicures, especially if you are, especially if you are a diabetic. So, go in for a podologue because they. I think that is called Shiro for this. Ah, okay. Yeah, I don't know the English word. And I did not even have time to really check for it. Shiro for this. Yeah, it's possible. The for this there is food. So the Shiro for this is possible. Okay. Thank you very much, Doc Lover. Shiro for this. Okay, Shiro for this. Yeah, so that is this. You have to look for them. If you are in Belgium, you have right to them two times per year. Maybe you can, it depends on how you arrange it, but you can go there two times per year. They will help you to control your feet and do all your care for you. And even the creams, if you cannot find a moisturizing cream, they can prescribe good moisturizing creams for you. So that is how it works. Hey, Cloudy, you're welcome. Thanks for joining. Let me read Christabel on Facebook. She said, that's also why when you go out in the morning, with very fitting shoe by afternoon or evening the story may have changed pains not because of tiredness but because the feet may have become slightly swollen that is just a crystal bear you feel it yeah so you got that point for sure that is just it uh, signature 584 it says i think is podiatrist hey god somebody should look it up for us Signature, thanks also for the suggestion. He said, I think is a podiatrist. I'm a podiatrist. Ah, okay, you are a podiatrist. That's good. Okay, it's possible a podiatrist. And then let's be writing them down. We learn from each other, podiatrist. Yeah, we call it a podologue. I just know food. I, when I want to translate it, I don't even need to look far. I know, I will just say food specialist. Podologue. That's why I've never taking time to really sit and translate it into English because I always refer it as a food specialist. Podiatrist and podiatrist. Yes. Thank you very much for your contribution. Signature 5848. Okay, signature. Yes. Okay, wow, signature. I've taken note of the term. Yes, me also. I've, I've written it down. I will look for it after this show for sure. I really search it because always I use podolo because here we call it podolo. But if I want to translate it, I always say food specialist. You can go to the food specialist. So now we know that uh, F go say Shiro Podis now which one dog lover? <laughs> food, F go now food specialist. Yes, to make it easy, let's give it Shiro Podolis is about ba ah okay. Shiro Podol. Uh, Shiro Podis is about back. Okay, oh, we are learning that one now. So let me write that down. Shiro Podis is about back. Okay, so we've learned two new terms today. Okay, no problem. So 
we don't learn, we have learned the terms of how we can trace. No, Shiro police always deal with nails. But if they deal with nails, normally, uh, actually, a podolo or a food specialist is different from a pedicure. A pedicure is someone who is specialized with the nails. A pedicure concentrates mostly with the nails. A pedicure will not come and be doing too much. Okay, maybe if you have cracks or if you have dry, dry feet, and then they can help to scrape all the dryness from your feet but they are not really specialists for people that have diabetes so they cannot really trace food problems people that trace food problems i call them podolo which i'm still going to look for the english word but let's just use a food specialist not pedicure please a medical pedicure is absolutely different from what i am saying we are not referring yet to a pedicure not pedicure. We are not talking about pedicure here because pedicure is something else. A pedicure, they cannot help anyone who is suffering from diabetes apart from them cutting their nails. Apart from that, they cannot do anything to a diabetic patient. So we are talking about a podolog. It's a podolog I'm referring to here. Yeah, so let's not confuse a pedicure, a medical pedicure and a podolog. There are two different professions. Those are two different professions. So let's not confuse them. Okay, yes, so that was that. We just said that. So I have talked about why we have to take care of our feet. Voila, they are not, but medical ones, they are qualified. They are qualified, but they are not like specialists to trace problems. A medical, a medical pedicure, they are qualified, but the thing is that if they see a foot problem, they cannot easily trace it. They cannot identify it, and they cannot give solutions to those problems. But a foot specialist or a podolo can trace a foot problem. Even from seeing your feet, that your feet are dry, they can easily detect what is happening with you. Mommy Swampy, you are welcome. Thanks for joining. Big Suru, sweetheart, you don't finish your... Is Big Suru here already? Hey, Big Suru, are you here? You're welcome. Thanks for joining. Hey, Mommy Swampy, thanks for joining. Greetings to everyone. Greetings to you, sis. Yeah, so I beg, let's not confuse between a medical pedicure and a podolog. They are two different people. Let's not confuse them. They are two different people and they function differently. Even a, a medical pedicure can come to you and still direct you to a podolog or to a food specialist. So that is how it is. A podolog or a food specialist is higher than a medical pedicure. A medical pedicure, just from its name, it's mostly with toenails. They mostly deal with toenails. So please, let's not confuse uh, those two words. They are two different professions. What I mean here, I'm talking about a podolog, a food specialist, someone that is qualified, someone that is trained to identify food problems. There is no difference between a podiatrist and chiropodist, but podiatrist is a more modern name. A podiatrist can help you with common food problems, including. Okay, then it's good. She says, signature uh, 584, I say, please educate them. That is what I'm trying to do, signature. Hey, Big Suru, thanks for joining. Big Suru, I don't need your gift away. Just the joy you give me for coming online is enough. Confirm, Mobi Swampy. Big Suru, our journalist. <laughs> our journalist. Yeah, so dog lover. Yeah, so that is just this. So we've talked about food problems, how, what causes food problems. I said what causes food problems is mostly when you have high blood sugar levels. And that is why it is most, it, most uh, very important for you to bring your blood sugar levels under control. Because if you don't bring your blood sugar levels under control, consistent high blood sugar levels can damage your nerves which is known as diabetic neuropathy i have given us signs to trace diabetes food problem and the first sign was pain if you have pain if you have numbness if you have cramps if you have deformation in your feet those are all signs of food problems yeah so those are all signs of food problem and then i went ahead to 
talk on how you can limit food problem. And the first thing for you to do in order to limit food problem is for you to inspect your feet daily. Make sure to inspect your feet. And I said, if you cannot inspect your feet by yourself, make sure to use a mirror to inspect your feet. And if you think that the result that you are getting using a mirror is not enough, then call somebody to help you inspect your feet because it's very important for you to do a daily checkup. The second thing I said in order for you to prevent foot problems is to wash your feet daily. When you wash your feet, don't only end at that stage. Make sure to dry your feet well, especially in between your toes. Dry your feet in between your toes, dry them well, and then moisturize your feet because if you moisturize your feet, it can help to prevent cracks. I said the third thing was for you to take good care of your toenails. Taking good care of your toenails is for you to cut your nails. Don't keep long toenails. It is advisable to cut your toenails straight. Don't follow the shape of your toes. No, it is not good. So use a nail scissors to cut your toes. Dog lover, my soulmate. <laughs> Big Sura, you are doing weight loss, but have you changed your mind? No, Big Sura has not changed her mind. No, she's doing weight loss and she must do it. Big Sura, no change in mind for that weight loss journey. Yes, F gold. Mommy swampy. So that is it. And then the other thing was, was for you to wear good shoes. Make sure to wear good shoes and always inspect your shoes before you wear these shoes in order for you to avoid putting your feet on sharp objects inside your shoes. So always check your shoes before you wear them. I gave a tip for you to buy your shoes. Make sure to go very early in the morning. Not, not to go very early in the morning, sorry. Not to go very early in the morning if you want to buy your shoes. But make sure to go late in the afternoon or go late in the evening if you want to purchase shoes. Why? Because at this time, your feet are a little bit swollen and then you can and get good shoes. Ha ha ha, when I deceive my palava now. The fire palava big through. Yes, and then now let's talk on what you can do to prevent food problem. The first thing for you to do to prevent food problem is for you to bring your blood sugar levels under control. As I always say, the first problem when it comes to diabetes, it has to do with blood sugar level. So for you to manage any problem, for you to manage any problem that surrounds diabetes, you have to first bring your blood sugar levels under control. So the first thing for you to do in order to prevent food problems is to bring your blood sugar levels under control. Make sure to put your blood sugar levels under control so that consistent high blood sugar levels will not damage your blood vessels and they will not cause damage to your nerves. Remember, if your nerves are damaged or your blood vessels are damaged, it will cause your blood vessels to be narrow, which will prevent blood flow. So prevent it by putting your blood sugar levels under control. The second thing for you to do to prevent food problem is for you to stop smoking. If you are smoking, make sure to stop smoking. There are better ways to stop smoking. The in so moderate intake carbohydrate. Thank you very much. And that is one of the ways in which you can manage your blood sugar levels or bring your blood sugar levels down is for you to moderate your intake of carbohydrate, just like Signature 5848 said. So moderate it. Do exercise. If you can lose weight, lose weight. It is very important when you are a diabetic suffering with high blood sugar levels. Reduce your weight. So that is number three. The first one was for you to bring your blood sugar levels under control. You can do that through moderate carb carbohydrate intake. The other thing was for you to reduce your weight. And then stop smoking if you are smoking. Smoking is not good to your blood vessels. Smoking helps to damage your blood vessels. So avoid smoking. If you are smoking, there are many things out there that can help you to stop smoking. Talk to your doctor and tell them that you want to stop smoking. They will tell you exactly what to use in order for you to stop this process uh, uh, slowly but steadily. 
So make sure to talk to them. Thanks so much for this free knowledge, sister. My pleasure, F go. It's my pleasure, sis. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Drink water and exercise walking. Thank you very much. Those are the best ways for you to reduce your blood sugar level. That has always been the motto on this on this platform for you to bring your blood sugar levels. And how are you going to bring your blood sugar levels? That is for you to eat less carbohydrate. You exercise, drink more water, go in for a walk at least 30 minutes per day. I said that normally for a diabetic, you are required, in order for you to bring your blood sugar levels, you are required to exercise at least 150 minutes per week. And this 150 minutes, I break it down for us to make it more easier that in the place of you doing this 150 minutes exercise per day, it is very important that you split it so that you can enjoy the process of doing these exercises, thereby making it five times per week. So in the place of you doing one day, 150 minutes, splits it into five days every Every day you are doing 30 minutes of exercise that is your 150 minutes exercise per week which is very okay so you don't have to go in for 150 minutes just on one day no you cannot keep it up so try to split it do it in a way that we conveniently do, you you can conveniently do it and you can have joy when you are doing it vanessa you the year no the drink plenty water too. Very important. Of course, dr <laughs> Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa, drink water. Water is very important, especially when you are a diabetic and you have high blood sugar level. Not only for a diabetic, for our general health, water is very important. It helps to cleanse our system. So the water, not only for persons that way you get diabetes. No, for a normal human being like you and me, we need for the drink water plenty. We need for hydrate our system. When you drink water, it helps also. It prevents knee stones or kidney stones. It prevents kidney stones. You drink plenty of water, you pee, it reduces the sugar in you. It helps also to clean your system. So let's try and be drinking water. Last time during my live show, I talked about ways in which we can encourage ourselves to drink water. I say, if you cannot drink water because water is tasteless, look for the fruits that you enjoy eating. Ah, Vanessa is big cereal. Okay, big cereal. Your name is Vanessa. Just hearing that now. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, I have got drinking water. I have four hours. Confirm, big cereal. Yeah, so last time I advised us that if you are that person that is not drinking water, look for ways to be drinking water. And I said, one of those ways is for you to look for those fruits that you enjoy eating. Cut them, look for your water bottle and put those fruits inside. Because you love those fruits, it will encourage it, it will encourage you to be drinking this water. Why? Because in the course of drinking it, you are getting the taste of that fruit that you enjoy drinking. So water is very essential to our well-being, not only for people who have diabetes, but for us as humans, we need to drink water. So that is one way for you to manage your blood sugar levels. And another way for you to prevent food problems is for you to lose weight if it is necessary. If you, if you notice that you are overweight, make sure to reduce your weight. Overweight is, is when your BME start ranging around 25. If you start having a BME of 25, know that you are overweight and then you have to start taking measures to reduce it. You have to start taking measures to reduce this weight because it is it's not going to be healthy again. It's going to put you at risk for many things. So try to reduce your weight. And then make, ensure that you exercise. We have just talked about exercising. So make sure to exercise. Don't do 150 minute exercise per day. No. If you do 150 minute exercise, the next day you will not even like to go and exercise again. Because those 150 minutes were too much and tiring. 
And maybe you did it under hard struggle, so you will not even have the desire to go and exercise again. But then if you split it to 30 minutes, and then you just go walk maybe 30 minutes, and you come back, those 30 minutes will pass so fast, and the next day when you even think about it, you will be so happy that you want to go again and do another 30 minutes. Those are just simple tricks for us to do to lose weight. Don't go and to the gym, boom, 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 one hour in the gym. No, it will not help you. You can do it for two weeks, but the third week, by the time you reach the third week, you will be tired and you cannot continue. The most important thing is to do things that have long-term goals, not short-term goals. Things that you enjoy doing, things that you can do them for longer periods, those are the kind of goals that you have to aim at. Doc Lover say, lemon and cucumber water, very refreshing. Thank you very much. Those are tricks for you to drink water. Cut some lemon, citron, lime, put them in your water. Cucumber, they are very refreshing. Just like Doc Lover said, put them. And not only drinking the water, it can help also in your weight management. Find exercise that you like doing dancing, swimming, and walking. Thank you very much, Doc Lover. Yes, they should look for exercise that they enjoy doing, not going and doing what are is what what whatever they are doing because you see other people they are doing and then you too you are doing. No, look for those things that you enjoy doing. Just like Doc Lover said, if you are that person that you like dancing, dance for 30 minutes. That is exercise. If you like to swim, go and swim for 30 minutes. That is exercise. If you like walking, if you're that person, you don't like to jog, go, just take a walk, walk for 30 minutes and come back per day is enough. You don't even need to exceed 30 minutes in your exercise. That is good. Let me read what uh, Valerie is saying. Let me take this uh, comment from Facebook. It says, talking about drinking water, I was the type who can go days without water. Thanks to your show, I have been able to drink two liters of water a day for a week now. And trust, I can notice some changes. Thank you very much, Brother Valerie, for this confirmation. Yes, thank you very much. So I just read a comment on Facebook from our brother, brother, brother Valerie. He said he has been taking or drinking water now for the past one week and he is actually experiencing some changing some changes isn't that great we can all do it yes drink water water is good water is healthy water is life drink it that means every saturday at the go me club now for exercise of course even if it is to dance go and dance if it's dancing that you enjoy doing dance when you dance you will sweat and when you sweat that is removing some calories out of your system it's very important for you to do it look for anything that you enjoy doing that is the most important thing if you like to walk in a farm go to the farm and walk that is also exercise you are doing there. If you like cleaning, if you are that person that enjoy cleaning, clean, do cleaning. That is exercise. Look for things that you enjoy doing. Dog lover, but uh, Valerie SMA, this comment is for you. Wow, great job, bro, Valerie. Keep going, bro. You are doing great. Yes, dog lover is a he. He is indeed doing great. He is indeed doing great. I go shake and find tomorrow. Confirm, big series. As a, but shake it where in? <laughs> shake it in your in your spot attire, big suru. In your spot attire, where you are going there to that dress in your spot attire. <laughs> no one is funny. Not just dressing anyhow. Dress in your spot attire where you are going to the club to dance there, so that you know that you are in a sportive mood. Not going there in the anyhow. No, in your sports attire. Let me read this from Doc Lover. With diabetes, a spoon of apple cider in water also helps. It helps indeed. A spoon of apple cider in water helps. It helps indeed. It helps to lower your blood sugar levels. It also helps people that want to lose weight. They use it for weight loss journey. So you can also add it into your daily routine. 
it cop digestion, it, uh, it helps in digestion, and it can make you even to go for longer, longer hours without eating. So if you are that person that can take apple cider vinegar, go for it. But I will always say, don't take apple cider vinegar empty. Make sure to dilute your apple cider vinegar. Always dilute it with water because it is not good for your teeth and even for your stomach. It can destroy the lining in your stomach. So make sure to dilute it. Some people cannot, some people cannot uh, st stand it. So please dilute it, especially if you are a gastric patient. Be careful and know how you are taking it. Most often talk to your doctors, ask them because some medications can interrupt with this apple cider vinegar. So if you are taking medication, if you are on many medication, ask, find out from your doctor to see if apple cider is good for you because apple cider can intervene with some medications. Apple cider vinegar can make your fat, can make you... <laughs> So apple cider vinegar can make you fat for Africa. But if it's making you fat, it's also helping you now. It's helping the system. So it's good. <laughs> yeah, if you go, maybe you are drinking it like that. Try to dilute it in water and then you see the consequences. I take two tablespoons with hot water. Okay, yeah, if you dilute it, it's good. Big cereal, always dilute it. Don't drink it empty because it's not good for the teeth and it's not good for your stomach lining. So please make sure to dilute it. Yes, apple cider is good. It helps too much. It helps for weight loss. If you, it helps to curb down your appetite. It helps in digestion. So it has too much benefits. You can use apple cider even in your salads. You can add apple cider vinegar in your salads. It's very good. Big Suru, I drink apple cider vinegar three times a week, not every day, my dear. Okay, you drink it, uh, uh, F go drink it uh, three times per week. Okay, that is also good, F go, if you can stand it three times a week. Some people, like people that really want to lose weight, they will, I, they will do it for every day, every day, which is good if you can stand it and then it's good for you. Yes. So with all that being said, now let's move to our big topic. How are we going to control our feet? I have been talking on diabetes food control. You have to control diabetes for food, food. You have to do this. You have to do this. But if you want to control, what are you going to control? So let's talk about that now. For you to control diabetes food is for you to control for the first thing the tone is and what will you be controlling when it concerns your tone is for your tone is you have to control that your tone is are short don't keep long tone is another thing was that my eyes <sighs> yeah. not hot water but warm water with lemon juice and Good stimulation for red cells and breakdown caps. Thank you very much, Signature 5848. Thanks for the contribution. Big Suru, you don't hear no. Not with hot water bed, with warm water, Big Suru. Not hot water. <laughs> Not hot water, Big Suru. Go for warm water if you want to drink your apple cider vinegar. Even cold water is good. You can use cold water. Yeah, but if you can stand hot water, it's also good. Tea is hot, eh? so if you can use drink like hot water, if you can stand the hot water, then it's no problem. Yes, and then so what are you? What will you be controlling? You have to control your toenails. Make sure that your toenails are well kept. They have to be short. They have to be clean and cut straight, not following the shape of your toes. I said that already. Another thing that you have to control. Uh, on your toenails is inflammation. Check to see if your toenails have been infected. Check to see if your toenails are damaged, broken nails. If your nails are broken, make sure to check all those things. If you are checking a diabetic food, make sure to check all those things. If you are checking their feet, you go check their nails. Make sure to check that. Ah, the toenails infected. Ah, the toenails broken. Those are the type of things you have to be controlling when it, con when it concerns 
toenails. Another thing that you have to control when it concerns toenails is to check if these toenails, how are they growing? Are they growing inside the flesh? Because some people, they have toenails that are growing. Instead of your toenails to be growing straight, your toenails are growing inside your flesh. That is not good. So if you identify toenails that are growing into your flesh, make sure to contact your podolo or your food specialist because that is not a good sign. It can grow inside your flesh until you incur wounds. So when you are checking your toenails, check for nails that are growing into your flesh. That is not a good sign. Your toenails have to grow straight. Another thing that you have to control when it comes to food control is for you to control the spaces in between your toes. Remember I said when washing your toes, you make sure that you dry your toes in between your toes very well. So you will be controlling in between your toes to see if there are any bacteria infections there. If there are any wounds, make sure to check them. Are the toe are they are in if I are the toes infected? Check them all. Make sure to dry them whenever you wash them. Let your toenails be clean. In between your toenails, be good and clean. Always control to see that you don't have maceration in between your toenail uh, in between your toes because it can cause bacterial infection and you will not like to suffer from bacterial infection because I tell you it is not good. I have seen people suffer from it. It is not good. Yes, clean socks. Yes, clean socks is another way for you to prevent food problems. So wear clean socks. Don't wear socks that have holes on them. No. Make sure that your socks are clean. They don't have any holes. They are straight. They are not with curves. No. They should be straight without holes. Wear clean socks. And don't walk around barefooted. To go around barefooted as a diabetic is a no-no because if you have diabetic neuropathy and then you pierce your foot on something, you might also not be able to feel it. So to go barefooted is a no-no for anyone who is suffering with diabetes. And that things between your toenails can smell. It can smell. So that is why you really have to wash your feet daily. Wash them daily and make sure to dry them well. The smell also is most, especially if you don't dry them well. If you don't dry your toe, toes well, if you don't dry in between your toes, that is when you will start getting this smell. But if you are washing your feet well, you are drying them well in between your toes, you make sure that you always dry them and then you will not get this smell as gold. People, they have this smell because they wash their feet, but they don't take time to dry their feet. And then all this water, it stays there. It starts creating bacterial infection. That is why it smells. The smells is because of the bacterial infection, not about not anything causing the smell, but infection from bacteria. So you have to keep them well. Yes, you can use salt, a salt solution. It's good. Also good, it will help able to remove all the dead skins from your feet. Use salt solution, soak your feet in a little bit of warm water, allow it to stay there, and then you scrub it. It will remove all the dead skins from your feet. Yes, our podolog in the house, you said you are a, pod, a, 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 what? a podiatrist. Yes, <laughs> a podiatrist. Yes, so make sure to always do it. Thanks for the knowledge signature. Yes, yeah, so that is what you have to be doing. So if you don't dry your feet well, you will have bacterial infection and it's this bacterial infection that is causing this smell. But if you dry your feet well, you will not have this smell, I, I assure you. So I have talked about you checking your toenails, checking in between your feet or your toes, check in between your toes. It's very important. That in between your toes is very important. And then to check your feet and under your foot, make sure what are you checking on your feet and under your foot? You are checking to see any signs of wound or bruises or blisters. If you have blister, you have open wounds, make sure to start treating them immediately. 
Diabetes wound, they are not wound that you have to allow. Okay, no, the wound just small. I'll start treating it next week. No, no, no. A diabetic wound is a no, no, no. If you realize now that you have a wound, that particular moment, start taking care of that wound. Don't wait to say the wound is still small. It will, nothing will happen. No, something can happen and it can even be worse. So start treating your wound. So if you check your foot, you check under your feet, you are checking for signs of wounds, signs of blisters, signs of bruises. Those are the kind of things you are checking to see if you have cracks on your feet. If you have cracks, make sure to go to a specialist to remove those cracks. Don't try to remove the cracks by yourself. I'm emphasizing on this because I know what people can do. So stop doing it yourself. Give somebody to do it for you. Give to a specialist to do that for you, especially if you are a diabetic. I am really emphasizing on diabetic because when you are a diabetic patient and you have a wound, I'm telling you, because of diabetic neuropathy, these wounds are very difficult to be healed. Why? Because there is limited blood flow that is going to that wound. And this limited blood flow, it means that your wound will not be able to have the nutrients that it is required of it to heal. So please, if you have a wound, start directly and treat that wound. Do all your possible means to prevent you from having wounds when you are a diabetic patient. It is very important. Diabetic wounds are not to be taken for life for granted. They can lead to amputations. You will see today they cut the toe. By the next time they cut the second toe, the third time they will say, oh, we'll just cut the foot. By the next time you want to, the whole foot is gone. Why? Because of the lack of blood flow. Blood flow. If your blood is not flowing well, your nerves are damaged. That is dead, uh, 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 dead flesh. And so the only thing for them to do to, to help you is for them to amputate it, which is not good. I don't think anybody will want to have an amputated leg of soul. So let us try and prevent wounds when it concerns diabetes, please. Yes, so I have said what you have to control when it concerns foot care is for you to control your toenails, control in between your toes, control under your feet. The next thing you have to control is you have to control the temperature. When you are controlling your feet, check the temperature of your feet. Are your feet warm? Are they cold? Make sure to check it. How is the color of your feet? You have to know. Is it your notice? If it is cyanotis, it means that there is not enough blood flow in them, which will make it to have a pale color. So make sure to check it. Sis, I have to go now. Great show. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much, Doc Lover. See you tomorrow. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Regular exercise is good. And after dinner, always make a walk and do not eat late. Thank you very much, Signator. All these things you have been saying, you are saying, I have been mentioning them here on this show to make sure to exercise and even make it easy for them. Exercise at least 30 minutes per day. Eat healthy. Don't eat late. Avoid late eating. Last time I even gave a plan for a day meal plan. And I said, if you want to eat at least if it's late, Seven o'clock, don't exceed seven o'clock and you start going to look for something to eat. Even if you want to eat after 7.30, look for something that is low in calories, low in fats and eat. Don't go to bed with a heavy stomach. It's not going to help your diabetes. It's only going to make you with, leave you with high blood sugar levels in the morning, which is not good which is not good. So the next thing I have said is for you to check your temperature or your, your feet color. Check your feet color to see how which color your feet is having. Is it a cyanotic color, which will be pale, which means that there is limited blood flow. So make sure to check it. My mom is washing from Cameroon. Wow, thank you very much, Brother Valerie. Keep sharing, keep sharing, bro. Yes, keep sharing. Let me drink some water.
Yes, so I have talked about the skin color. I have talked about the temperature. Another thing for you to control is the shoe. Control the shoes that you are wearing. Make sure you are not wearing shoes that are damaged. No, if you're wearing damaged shoes, shoes that are not fitting your feet, they are not good. They can only bring more harm to your feet. So wear shoes that are good for you, shoes that fit you well. Mom, welcome up. Brother Valerie, which name is she using so that I can welcome her? Which name is she, is she using? Brother Valerie, which name is your mom using so that I can wear? Normally, I always see her. She's joining and then she's going. I think it's a network. I'm seeing one woman joining and living on Facebook. Joining and living on Facebook. I think it's the network. But thank you very much for connecting her here. Thanks very much, Brother Valerie. Yes, now she's on. I think she's on. Her. Mama, welcome. Oh, good evening. Please, can you just comment so I greet you, Mama? You're welcome. Thanks very much. Brother Valerie says, says you're washing us from Cameroon. Thanks very much, Mama, for washing. We appreciate your presence here. You're welcome, Mama. Connections, you worry, especially on Facebook. Yes, I see because she's coming and going, coming and going. I think it's actually connection problem. The connection are really bad luck. Good night, bye, and stay blessed. Thank you very much, Signature 5848. Thanks very much for the contribution. Contribution, you have been so instrumental here today. Thanks very much. And keep coming, keep contributing. We need you here. Yes, we need you here. Keep contributing. Yes. Thanks very much. We see tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be having a guest speaker in the house. Please, let's not forget. We will be having a guest speaker all the way from America. He will be coming to talk to us about his experiences managing diabetes in Cameroon. Please. So let's not forget, I made a poster already. He will be with us at 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. So at 12 p.m. we will be live only on YouTube. So tomorrow our show will be only on YouTube. We will have no show on Facebook here yeah, because I just have to connect only on one platform and that platform is going to be YouTube. So our guest speaker will be with us on YouTube. He will be telling us about his experiences managing diabetes while in Cameroon. And then he can give us a brief information on how he is managing his diabetes now in America. So that is going to be a wonderful show. Okay, noted. Yes, thank you very much. So before I forget, let me put that into our knowledge. The posters are out already on Facebook and on YouTube. So we will be having a guest speaker live with us to talk to us about how he is coping with his diabetes. So it will be very interesting to hear from someone who is actually experiencing diabetes. You know, they, if you have experience in something, you can talk it or you can say it much better than us that just learn it because I don't know what they are actually feeling. I can only imagine. But that person experience it can best tell us what to do, what to avoid because it is working with them. So please, let's make it a rendezvous tomorrow at 12 noon. I will be going live in the place of 9 p.m. My show will be at 12 noon. That is 12 noon Belgian time. 11 uh, a.m. Cameroon time, and then 5 a.m. American time. Peninsula? Yeah. Peninsula time. Yes, Peninsula time, because he is in the state of Peninsula. So by then, it will be 5 a.m. And then us is, us is 12 p.m. And then Cameroon is 11 p.m. Joy, time difference now. Wow, why self? Yeah, so that will be for the sh that is it for the show tomorrow. We'll be having a guest speaker. 5 a.m. the American time, Belgian time, 12 noon, and then um, um Cameroon time, 11 a.m. So that is the time we will be meeting here live to hear what he has to tell us. So, yes, that was it for our food control, how to control a diabetes food. Yes, penislave. Penny, Penislinia, yes. Penislinia, okay. Yes, 5 a.m. Cameroon time, 11 a.m. And then Belgian time, Christabel, and German time. Yeah. 
Benjamin time, uh, German time. Confirm. Thank you very much for putting the time there. So we'll be live tomorrow. Please, let's ensure to be there because it's going to be great. Let's learn from experience because he will be speaking out of experience. Yes, so tomorrow is going to be great. Let's make it a date. Let's make it a rendezvous to be there. If we don't have any questions, I think we can call it off for today. We have talked about diabetes food care, how you can manage diabetes food care, how you can try to prevent the risks of having diabetes problems. I gave some signs and symptoms that you can use to trace if you are having diabetes food problems or not. And then I also give some tips or some points on how you can manage it to prevent them. So please make sure to wash out on these signs so that you will prevent diabetes food problems because it will not be good for you to incur any injuries and we know diabetes food problems, they are so difficult to heal because of damaged nerves or because the blood flow is limited. So let's prevent it. And the first place to start preventing is for you to bring your blood sugar levels under control. Bring your blood sugar levels under control. That is always the first point where you have to start. Thank you so much, our able diabetes educator. My pleasure, Uncle Valerie. You're welcome. Yes. So we have to start by bringing our blood sugar levels under control. If we bring our blood sugar levels under control, we will see that all these problems with food, we can avoid them because it begins with us having high blood sugar level. So take what to take home. Make sure to inspect your feet daily. Make sure to wash your feet, dry them well, especially in between your toes. Make sure to moisturize your feet. And then for your nails, coat your nails well. Coat your nails straight. Don't coat your nails following the shape of your toes. No, it's going to incur some injury. You can easily incur injuries. So coat your toe nails straight. If you have problems with your feet, make sure to contact a doctor or a podologue for them to help you on what to do. Don't try by yourself to manage your foot problems. No, look for a specialist to give you advice on what to do because they know best. They can help you better. So that is what we are supposed to do. Germany, Belgium, and other Central European countries have same time, 12 p.m. Thank you very much, Krista Zoom. So 12 p.m., please, let's meet on Diabetes Mindful Talk to, to welcome our guest and hear what he has to tell us tomorrow. Like I always say, make sure to bring your blood sugar levels under control. Eat healthy and stay healthy. That is very important because our health is our wealth. If we are healthy, we can do anything. But if you have wealth, but you are not healthy, it is like useless because you cannot even eat the money or the wealth that you have. You cannot enjoy it because then peace of mind, you cannot have it. So the first thing for you to do is for you to have good health. Hello, my lady. How are you today? Welcome back to another life. Thanks very much. Cooking with Mao. You're welcome. Thanks for joining, sis. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up. So for those of you who are watching, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't yet subscribed or follow my page on YouTube, on Facebook, if you are not yet following me and keep in touch so that we we'll keep creating diabetes awareness. We are one, our goal, our function is to create diabetes awareness. So let us keep creating diabetes awareness in our community because people need to know about the dangers of diabetes. Cooking with mouth 23, sorry, I'm late. It's okay, sis, no problem. You are here, the most important thing is that you are here. It's okay, sis. Yeah, so make sure to take good care of your feet in order for you to prevent foot problems. The first thing is for you to make sure to bring your blood sugar levels under control. If you are smoking, stop smoking because smoking can damage your blood vessels. And when your blood vessels are damaged, 
the blood flow will be limited, which is not good. Another thing for you to do is for you to exercise if it is necessary. If you see that you are overweight, go in and do some exercises. Hi, everyone in the chat. Hopefully, you are all good. We are doing well. We are doing well cooking with Mao. Thanks for joining, sis. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that was it for this show. I don't know if we have any questions. If you have any questions, you can drop your questions so that we can try to answer them. No problem. You can rewatch tomorrow. It's another day, but it's going to be at 12 noon time only on YouTube. Yes, tomorrow our show is only on YouTube. Only on YouTube. We won't be having a show on Facebook, but I'm going to post the link on Facebook. Only the link I will post on Facebook. So when you click on the link, the link will redirect you to YouTube. And tomorrow we will be having our show, not like usual, not at 9 p.m., but our show will be at 12 noon. So please, let's make it a rendezvous to be there tomorrow. You are all welcome. I thank you all very much for this wonderful show. I hope you have learned something. I hope you are going back home with something. And if there is anything that you still need to know, please make sure to drop a comment under this video. I will come and reply you. Because sometimes I have too much to say. By the time I sit in front of the camera, some of these things, they will fly away. So if you have anything to say, any question, drop it under this video. If I see it, I will reply to your question. So yes, thank you all very much. I wish you all a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend ahead. See you all tomorrow live at... Diabetes Mindful Talks on YouTube. No Facebook tomorrow, please. No Facebook. We are meeting on YouTube tomorrow. Please, let's make it a rendezvous 12 p.m. So make sure to hit on that notification bell so that you will get the notification when we are live. Have a good week and thank you very much, Cooking with Mao. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you all very much for the support. We meet again tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Yes, bye, 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 bye. See you all tomorrow. Good night, bye.